Hey, it's Chuck here back with a special episode of Milton Daily Homes and the Milton Price Report. Now, it's Easter Monday, it's about mid-morning or so, and I decided to look up, and this is how crazy I am, spending the whole morning on MLS, coming up with a list of homes that have, are proof, absolutely, that, that the market's changing. Now, I know we're on the brink of uh, a new budget, we're on the brink of a lot of things happening, and what I believe is happening is that the inventory mostly because of people that I think see the opportunity to even cash out. We've seen the huge demand in Guelph, Cambridge, Kitchener-Waterloo from Milton. We've seen that almost go like this. Buyer demand, if anything, has maybe peaked or possibly even gone down. It's hard to say without seeing the stats, uh, but we've seen a huge amount of inventory increase. We've had more homes listed in a week in April than we saw the entire month of January. So. Let me show you a little bit about what was going on at the end of March. So this is the Milton price report. You can see days on market went a little bit up from February. And you can also see the new listings compared to sales. So we had a real tight month in February where that's the number of sales. That's the number of homes that were listed. So the closer these things are, the, the tighter the market. And so you saw at the end of March, what happened was the inventory went way up. Uh, which is normal for the spring. We see that trend last year as it kind of peters down and, and slows down. But to see that kind of a jump like that, uh, sales were still higher, but they probably kept th the ratio opened up a little bit more. So I'm going to show you uh, a bunch of examples from the last 14 days. So from April 3rd to April 17th, this is what's gone on in the market. So first example, I'm gonna put a link down to the list down below. So Freeman Trail 899 is uh, is what they listed for. Okay, so they, they listed on April 7th. Uh, we're going to take offers April 13th. Now I don't know what happened on offer night on a lot of these, unless I was specifically part of them. Uh, April 13th didn't get anything. So then what they did was they relisted on April 15th, and so they put it at 929, offers any time. Here's another example, Tupper listed April 6th, they were gonna take offers on April 12th. I don't know what they got on offer night, but the next day on April 13th, they canceled, relisted, put it out at 989.8. McCready listed 799.9 uh, offers on April 9th. Uh, that didn't work out, so what they did was they canceled and relisted and put this one lower. First two were higher, this one's at 779.9, taking offers anytime. This one on Maple, top floor unit 405, listed for 499, uh, days on market is seven days. That didn't work out, now they've canceled and relisted and they've put it at 449, holding back on offers. So Court Street listed for 14 days between uh, March 21st and then they, uh, they were taking offers April 3rd. First of all, I think that's too long. That's just my own feelings on that. Four to seven days is the window because if you leave offers for 12 days, what happens is someone who saw it on day three has nine other days to find another house. And so someone who may have been interested has now kind of dispersed and, and changed their focus. You gotta keep it, you gotta strike when the iron's hot, four to seven days, that's the ratio. And you have to cross a weekend too. Uh, anyway, this one was listed uh, during that time, 849, or sorry, 829. They've now canceled and relisted uh, at 849. Uh, they have a pre-listing inspection, but they're taking offers anytime. So this one on Husband Place, you have to remember that right around the corner, like this year, we've seen sales of 650, 660. So they put it at 599, which is pretty much what most of these larger homes are doing. And 15 days, no offers. Then they put it up to 659. They tried it for 10 more days, which is more of what you'd think would be fair market value given the history. But the problem with history is that it's today backwards and if it was a better market back then and now it's not you can't look at history you have to look at your competition and you also have to have your finger on the pulse bottom line is after a month at two different prices didn't sell took both listings off douglas gardens 899.9 had it listed for a week it says eight days here and didn't have any action so now they're at 799 
remember double car garage doesn't have really a backyard it's a courtyard but dropped it by a hundred thousand now they're taking offers on april 21st Fasca, another one 729 is what they were listed for uh held back on offers i think till april 4th didn't get anything and now we're at 699 and they're taking offers on this one here's the thing the listing says taking offers by april 11th they haven't even crossed that off so uh it's amazing to me it's april 17th it's six days after they were taking offers and the agent has still left it in the broker comments that they're taking offers on that day obviously hasn't sold galbraith another one 1 1.195 3170 square feet i like this location a lot uh finished basement plus that 3170 didn't get offers and uh went to 1.1 million still haven't received offers on this one it's past the offer day okay so this one on wet and hall was kind of an interesting one it still gives you hope i'm sure i haven't given you a lot of hope up to this point uh listed 529 started on march 28th i uh, was taking offers i think april 3rd didn't get it canceled relisted at 539 ended up selling the place for 590 so raised the price by 10,000 and then obviously got a lot more and that happened right away after it relisted so this one on Fitzgerald used a kitchen shot as their main shot uh anyway it's a smaller semi-detached 639.9 uh they had it listed for eight days and I think at some point they changed the wording to say no pressure of a bidding war. Anyway, after eight days, they canceled, relisted. Typically in this list, we've seen either above or below that it goes, but this one has actually relisted for the same price and it's still for sale. They now did an outside shot of the home. 276 Pettigrew, same neighborhood as the last one in, in uh, Dempsey. And so we've got 600,000, didn't get anything on offer night or didn't get anything that they wanted and so cancelled and relisted at 694.9 sold for 685 can you buy homes under market value absolutely not every home sells for a hundred thousand over that's why good experience and knowledge about the market uh, you're going to see is absolutely priceless especially in a transitioning market so this one on Mortimer, 749 uh, is what they listed for. Taken offers, didn't get anything or anything that they liked. Uh, Cancelled, relisted at 669 and five days later they sold for 730 which is less than they were asking before and less than this model has sold for quite a few times in 2017. Here's another kind of weird one that uh, that happened. So Reese Place listed for 549, 16 days on the market, nothing. Then what happened was they canceled, put it at 499, ended up getting 595, which is more than they could get in the first 16 days of the listing when it was listed for almost 50,000 less than what somebody paid. It's interesting. 319 Hobbs, nice use of a drone here, 625. They had it for five days. It has not, or it did not sell for whatever reason on offer night. Now they are at 729, advertising very clearly, avoid the bidding wars, offers anytime. You're gonna see very quickly that those words are gonna start to become dated because the market has shifted, as you can tell from this, this uh, video. So this one on Chooch Match is doing the wiggly fish move. So they started at 599, uh, ran it for eight days, did not get offers. They were holding back on offers. Then they decided to go to 630 and said, hey, offers anytime. Didn't get anything. Eight days on the market. What do we do now? Well, I think there's only one choice. We put it at 549 and we hold back on offers again. Missioner Place listed for 990, didn't get the offers they wanted, and so uh, put it up to 1.14, taking offers anytime. Be careful on this one because it says 35 square, 35 12 square feet of living space that includes the finished basement. It's a different value. We talk about this in Milton Daily Homes, whereas your main floor might be valued at you know 100 to 150 a square foot your basement might be valued at 30 to 40 a square foot so huge differences and i think that it's uh i don't know if it's entirely a good idea unless you're quoting a separate amount of space for the basement to, to lump it all in one
Church match 689 lasted a week and uh, didn't get uh, any. Well, I don't know. They may have gotten offers on offer night, but they canceled and relisted for 679. Changed the front picture a bit. Uh, showed the plaza, which is an interesting uh, side discussion about whether or not you're overt about something like that or you try and hide it. Uh, but they sold for 760. And this is the Westgate corner, which we've also seen uh, in this episode uh, in a previous one that we talked about. I think you're starting to get the picture now, but anyway, Hobbs 586 uh, did not sell, and so now they've canceled, relisted for 695. English Mill detached home about 1,900 square feet on a 30-foot lot, attractive price at 785. Nobody bought it, and so they canceled and relisted at 844.9. Historically, that's a very good price for this home. Uh, but they also have this June 15th date coming up where they probably need to sell. So if this market starts to become, uh, like if the conditions change a little bit, uh, you're going to start to see some people that need to sell. They're going to start to adjust their price down and they're going to accept offers lower than I think they could have gotten in February or even maybe March. 399 Trudeau, uh, 48, and so this one ran for 10 days, which, again, in my opinion, too long to accept offers, uh, but they didn't get them, so they canceled, and they're currently listed for 14 days at 48. I think the lesson with, with this one on McFerrin is just simply that the closer you are to model home level to really move in ready, the better you're going to be, uh, especially in a changing market. So this one on McFerrin, four days, uh, 625, didn't get it. Then they took the uh, the listing, put it down to 585, very attractive price for this home, and they got 705, which is, uh, I think, a good price for a 1370 square foot townhouse with a finished basement. 633 Simons, they were at 850 when they started the listing, dropped it to $800,000, uh, chopped the listing off quick, which I thought was going to kind of alter their momentum. If you want to talk about a model home, this one looked absolutely fantastic. 1835 square feet on a 34 foot lot, backing onto a pond with a finished basement. So then they, uh, I guess, put it back out at 800 and ended up with a 926, which I believe is one of the top five sales ever for a single car garage. So 649 Caldwell listed for 799,649. Uh, if you notice that represents the address of the home. Uh, single car garage, less than 2000 square feet, uh, dropped it down to 749, ended up getting 840. Again, another good news story from this list. 651 Farmstead number 65 uh, listed 600,000 four days on the market. Didn't like what was happening, so they put it at 589 and they're taking offers tomorrow on April 18th. Reichert, 698, six days on the market. Buyers said, hey, I don't want a bidding war, and so they dropped it down to 639 and they ended up with a bidding war, got 735. Another good news story from this list. 685 Gervais Terrace, 849, 17, 25 square foot detached home, 17 days on the market. Now, I think if this one was listed in February, it would have sold for 870. Uh, that's just the way things have been going with it, with, or that's how it was back in those days. So now they're at 799, they've been four days, and they're holding back an offer. So obviously, the goal is to try and get it higher. Than what they listed at before. Shanks Heights 1.25, 13 days on the market, didn't get it, dropped the price down to 1.19, and uh, after 10 days, receiving offers anytime, nothing. So this one on Azleton, 819, only lasted two days. They listed on uh, April 11th, a April 13th, and they were holding back till like April 18th or something like that. On the 13th, they said, nope, we're not doing 819, we are doing 749, and they're taking offers on that one on April 20th, so we'll see what happens. Tillets, a small uh, double car garage home, 799.9, held back on offers, didn't see what they liked, relisted, same price, offers anytime, got 900 less than, than full price seven days later.
on April 11th. Nadlin Heights, 519, 13 days on the market, did not go anywhere, ended up relisting, selling uh, three days after they listed at 499 for 560. Happy ending on this one. That's a Cherrywood, that's 1051 square feet for that one. That's a good price for that home. So this one on Ambrose probably finishes us up in a strange sort of logical, weird thing. So they listed April 5th. They were gonna take offers on April 17th, 12 days, we know this far too long but then six days into this listing they canceled and relisted for the same price and then they pushed back again so they started this one on april 14th and they're now taking offers in april 20th so if nothing else they shortened the days down but they kept the same price too so it's just a weird one so it's a bit of a weird time to be listing but you can still be successful so how we coach our clients is you've got to get these four elements right you've got to get your price right you've got to get your appearance right you can't mess around with how it looks the homes that are model home high level ready and that doesn't always mean the fanciest finishes it means clean bright and clutter free makes a huge difference marketing and finally the timing so the timing is in shift, pricing is a little bit in limbo right now. So if two of these are off, you're probably not selling. If one of these is off, your results may go down. So timing just on its own may cause you to not get the same results as we've seen over the last month or two, but you can still be successful. But make sure the other two are strong appearance and marketing, get a good local professional. And what we saw this back in 2008 when the market shifted, it came back, but it was pretty rough for a while. So here's the thing about the market. There's a lot of C agents right now that have been pretending they're A's because they're in an A market and they look really good. But when you put an A agent in a C market, they're gonna be successful. So hire a good solid professional, make sure they're an A player because the C players in a C market are not gonna get you the results. So that's the video, hope you enjoyed it. If you wanna reach us and talk about your plans, you can email me at chuck at charltonadvantage.com or call me at 905-693-9346.